This creepy crawly is a cave harvestman, a type of daddy long legs that's adapted to live its entire life underground. And this muddy fella is ecologist Mike Slay, who's on the hunt for a specimen of the rarely seen animal. We head down into the cave, just one of many in the limestone rich Ozarks. It's a prime spot to search for cave adapted critters. We know that there's six or seven cave adapted species here, all invertebrates. So we might get lucky and see most of those today. Ooh, here we go. Here's a cave animal on the surface of the water here. This is an insect. It's a very ancient insect. The, the animals are called diplurans. If you notice, if you look at it, it's completely white. And if you were to look under a microscope, it would have no eyes. Traits shared by many cave adapted animals, like grotto salamanders and Ozark cave fish. With, with an organism that's living in a cave, there's, there's so little food available, there's not an excess. So anything that they do to maximize their, their development is better for them. So if they're not putting all these extra resources into pigment or they're not putting extra resources into eyes, they can put that, that extra resource into reproducing, finding a mate. And that's just one of the, the theories that's out there. Leaving the diplorin behind, we keep searching for the harvestman. Of course, finding an animal no bigger than a quarter in a cave that could fit an office building is easier said than done. Looking for some of these rare animals is often a needle in a haystack. We kind of s stack that haystack as best we can by focusing on an area in a cave that, that looks like this. There's lots, of, there's a little bit of water, it's high humidity, there's organic debris right around here, and we know that those are the, the microhabitats that this particular animal lives in. To maximize their efforts, sometimes they'll set traps. So we'll do things like put out some really stinky Limburger cheese just in a little spot, put a rock over it, come back a couple of days later, and the, the animals can smell that and they'll come to that. But no traps are needed today, and Slay makes a find. This is a little harvestman here. Let's set him down and take a look at him. So far this guy is only known in three caves right here in this area, and that's the only three caves in the world that it's known from. So would you collect this specimen or no? Not this guy, because I've already gotten a couple from here. And so now what we do is like, I just, I'll note that, that when we came here today, um, I actually found two of them over there. But I found two of these organisms on today's date and they were on the underside of slightly wet wood. When he does need to collect a specimen, he's got a few tools at his disposal. Here Slay finds another diplorin. He collects the specimen and preserves it in alcohol. Back at his lab, Slay analyzes the insect and marks where and when he found it. So by collecting a few now and preserving them in perpetuity, we can identify it. And in the future, we can come back and know the name of this animal and monitor it. Slay and his colleagues work over the last 10 years has led to the discovery of 15 previously undescribed species in Arkansas alone, a find that's important to even us non-cave adapted animals. You can think of it like a canary in a coal mine. These rare organisms are, are similar to that. They're, they're the canaries. If we're managing the habitats for those, those little animals, then we're managing in a way that's actually going to benefit the rest of us on the surface. From Willis Cave for Discovery News, I'm Jorge Rivas.